This is Eric Campbell. You can find me at ericcampbell.com. This is Brian Walker with Image Armor Pretreatment and Inks. Johnny Shell with SGIA. Scott Fresner with T-Biz and Network International. And you're listening to Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 Hosted by Terry Combs and Aaron Montgomery. If you're not listening, you're missing out. All right. Well, welcome into the show. It is Friday, February 19th, 2021. I'm Terry Combs, and you can find me at terrycombs.com. And I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me over at rsuccessgroup.com. Terry, uh, today we're going to be talking about niche markets now more than ever. And uh, yeah, (laughs) it's one of our favorite topics. And and we just uh, have not... uh, yeah, we haven't talked about it as much lately. So uh, we've we've had so many guests lined up, Aaron, that uh, I think we uh, sometimes forget to do shows with just you and me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, we're excited about that. Uh, in just a moment, we're going to welcome in uh, Cheryl Kuchek from Su- Sublimation Summit, and we're going to get an update on the virtual event coming up. So we'll we'll, we'll still have a guest, Terry, but uh, after we get a chance to learn about Sublimation Summit, we'll uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about the the niche market it, in. Really, like like you titled it, Terry. I think this title is perfect now more than ever, right? I mean, it, it's uh, so important that we do that. So yeah, um, and, and and we'll get into that. Uh, you know, the 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 hows and whys of of now more than ever, but it's uh, it's really important in times like now, like like we're living through. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, just checking in with a couple of the regulators here first, though, Terry. Uh, Christine says, "Good morning, gentlemen," and uh, like. Like uh, <laughs> like I said before we started the show, I, I said, where? where? Where are those gentlemen? <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, uh, we've got Wade checking in and Richard, cold South Louisiana. Uh, Kevin says, good morning. Save me from this ice and snow. Terry, do you want to give your uh, Phoenix weather report? Let's see. It, it's only going to get to 72 today. So, Burr. <laughs> and and uh, you guys doing okay? How, how's the sunshine coming? Uh, it's uh, nine inches, and, uh, and it's still coming down. There's no end in sight, and it's going to be in the 80s this weekend. So, <laughs> uh, hey, but you know what? While you were shoveling snow, I had a lot of wind the other day, and I had to uh, clean some leaves off the top of my pool. I had to skim it. So, hey, you know, we're, we all have our burdens to bear. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, I feel for you uh, as uh, <laughs> we. <laughs> Dig out in uh, negative whatever, which and and again, I'm I'm certainly not complaining. I know that other folks in other areas have it much worse, and it's a lot colder. But uh, we're just not used to that, you know. Even though, and I'm not used to it being from Phoenix. Still, I still hang on to my Phoenix hat, even though I've been gone for ten years. Yeah. But um, <laughs> well, my uh, you know, my son lives at Austin, and uh, yeah, they they are finally not having blackouts. He was to a, he was at a point where they were having ten ten minutes of power on. 30 off, 10 on, 30 off. So he's working from home, right? So he gets emails ready. And then as soon as the power goes on, send, 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 send. <laughs> <laughs> it's that offline. Uh, man, all right. Well, interesting. Uh, <laughs> you gotta get a hot spot or something. I don't know. That's tough. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, so uh, let's see here. Yeah, lots of other folks checking in, Nan and Arnett and, and, uh, TJ says, uh, tough life, Terry. So, uh, you know, you can live. You know in what? I was going to say, anybody can live here. There's, <laughs> there's no, uh, no checking, uh, your Minnesota ID at the, at the uh, border to say, Oh, sorry. We're all full of Minnesotans. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, so yeah. Cause you're an Ohioan, I guess. Like, well, you came from Maryland first, right? That was your, your last stop before Phoenix was Maryland, wasn't it? Uh, it was. Yeah. I mean, I was only there for eight months before primarily Kansas city. So yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. And then uh good friend, Doug checking in says, good morning in quotes, gentlemen from Williamsburg, West Virginia, or Virginia. Sorry. Um, so I, there now, now it's more appropriate, Doug. Thank you. We got, uh, got it. Right. The, uh, <laughs> He knows what he's talking about. Exactly. So. <laughs> he's coming out with us. All right. Well, let, let, let's do this, Terry. Um, thank you guys so much for checking in. Good morning to everybody that we can get a chance to say good morning to yet. Uh, we're looking forward to having your comments, um, your feedback, your thoughts on niche marketing here in just a little bit. Um, but we also want to want you guys to know about this really cool event coming up. Um, actually, second year now that uh, Cheryl's done this as a virtual event. Um, there are going to be live events as well, and we'll, we'll talk to her about that. But uh, let's let's go ahead and bring Cheryl in here, Terry, and, and we'll, we'll find out what this Sublimation Summit's all about. All right. 
Hello, hello, Cheryl. How are you? Hi, good to see both of you. How are you? Hi, Cheryl. Great, Cheryl. Thanks Cheryl. for coming on. Yeah, yeah I appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. This sure. is exciting. And we're only, what, two and a half weeks away or something like that? I mean, we're, it's like upon us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I thought the website. Sure. Yep. I was at the website and you have your, your the countdown there. I think that's really cool. And it said yeah. uh, 18 days. So, <laughs> yikes. <You laughs> Did that don't make me nervous. <laughs> I was going to say that. that may have made you you know, jump a little bit there. But so yeah, let, let, yeah. for folks that aren't familiar, Cheryl, what is Sublimation Summit? Okay. Well, it is a virtual conference that um, was birthed out of, um, you know, obviously COVID because. Yeah. Um, you know, I was I was hell bent on having the in person last year. Um, it was in September, and surely COVID was going to be over, and it was not going to be an issue. And I was, you know, and everybody was doing virtual. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'll, you know, I'm, I'm going to be the last one holding out. <laughs> and then realize that um, the thing that really got me um, over the hump of doing it was the thought of having to be six feet apart and nobody's going to be able to hug. Nobody's going to be able to, to talk to you. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't. So yeah. I, I, you know, I, I just said, I caved in and said, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to look into it. And um, so we had an amazing event. Um, of course you were part of that, Aaron. Um, we had, um, we had 500 people sign up, but actually only about 300 and something. Um, it was really kind of odd, but only about 372 or 75 or whatever actually registered for the online classes because they really were, you know, they had to work the whole time. So they said, we'll watch the classes after, which is exactly what they did. So it was really interesting. So we are going to do the same thing that we did last year, which is we will have, um, you know, if they buy a ticket, they will be able to watch it from um, once we get them uploaded April 1st to um, uh, May 31st. Okay. And we have 59 classes right now. I mean, wow. it's, it's insane. Yeah. So March um, the 10th through the 12th, and it's going to be jam packed. Uh, as always, um, we have, I just want to share some of the classes that yeah. we have because sure. it's so cool. Um, we actually have a, um, a copyright attorney coming in to speak to us. Um, we know that um, there are some people who like Disney and they like to put them on their shirts and <laughs> on their mugs. And so anyway, Isn't that okay? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it just depends on um, if you're Disney. <laughs> and then um, we have, of course, we have Aaron. He will be there uh, representing our success group with two um, classes. And I know one that's going to probably have everyone in, it, and that's the Facebook and Instagram shops. That's going to be that's going to be awesome. People are going to love that. Yep. We have um, a bookkeeping company that's coming in to teach hobbyists how to um, make money and keep their books. Imagine that. Awesome. <laughs> Pay their taxes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow, that's going to be something. We, of course, we have um, we have Trotech. They'll be there representing lasers. We have new companies coming in with blanks that people are not familiar with. That's going to, I believe, really going to blow people away. We have our keynote speaker will be Sean Copeland again, and awesome. he is the Secretary um, of Commerce for the state of Oklahoma. He's amazing. Um, we will have our Q&A panel, which um, is made up of people like Aaron and Sean Copeland, David Gross, Chris Bernay. It's gonna be awesome. Um, that was one of the highlights last year that people loved. Um, I'm doing I'm doing a class with awesome. Ashley um, called Cheryl and Ashley Going Wild. <laughs> <laughs> is this an after hours class? Or is this <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Cheryl and Ashley Gone Wild with Artistry. <laughs> 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 put that in there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Don't forget that part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not forget that. Um, oh, we have so many classes. Like I said, we have 59 classes. We have a 3D oven class that I, again, so many people have asked about that. Um, this, um, we have laser. We have, um, of course, Photoshop. We have Corel Draw. Um, and again, you know, one thing I'd like to say is that I think people who take these classes, they need to take the classes because there's going to be three classes per hour. So mm -hmm. they need to take the one that they feel like they're going to have questions because the other ones they can watch later, but the ones that they might have questions on, they're going to want to have the live version of it so that they can ask questions. It's going to be pretty awesome. Um, you know, Cheryl, a lot, a lot of the, the events uh, recently have, you haven't had the opportunity to ask questions. So that's, I think that's huge. Yeah. Well, and another thing that I think differentiates us is that our, ours are, are, are all live. So there is no videos. I mean, there might be a snippet of a video, but it's not going to be a video class. And so mm -hmm. um, everything is live. I mean, we have people, I have um, one coming in from Austria that's going to be doing it, one from Germany. So we have people like literally around the world that will be teaching some classes. So he, and one that we have in, in Austria, he's going to be teaching on how to set up, um, let me get his class here. Um, how to set up a home video studio for sublimation, finding the right gear and his second class is setting everything up. So I think it's going to cool. be really awesome. So, right. um, yeah, so we have, um, so much, I mean, I mean, the, the tr um, what's trending in, in, uh, 2021. And of course we have Jimmy lamb. He's very popular, very funny. <laughs> How you could you have a sublimation event without Jimmy lamb? Right. <laughs> I, know, right? I mean, seriously. So yeah. Well, Cheryl, everybody's <laughs> chomping at the bit here. How do they sign up for this event? Okay, they can go to www.sublimationsummitlive.com and then you can go to registration or you can just go to sublimationsummit.com. And I believe you guys have a, a coupon code, Aaron. We do, we do, yep. You can use the code OSG and uh, use, uh, use the- OSG 25, I believe, right? Okay. I, I, th I thought it was OSG, but uh, OSG it might, 25. It might be. So it's either <laughs> OSG or OSG 25. Okay. Yeah, try both of those. $25 yeah. off. Yeah. Or try OSG. Yeah, you know me. Try that. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's GSG, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> There's just yeah. too many acronyms. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah. We'll, we'll confirm that. Sorry about that, Joe. I always yeah. had it as yeah. OSG. It's one or the other. We'll just let you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I Easy. Certainly will. There you go. And uh, cool. So sublimation yeah. summit live.com. And also I think people need to get over there and just check it out because, uh, you get to see like, I love the, the 3d, right? I mean, it's like you're in an actual trade show hall in a, in a yeah. sense. I mean, it is really a cool platform. Yeah, we're really excited about it. And, you know, we have all the industry experts in there from for sublimation. And of course, I love that. I really do. And, um, you know, one of these days, Terry, I got to somehow weave you in there. You don't, uh, <laughs> gotta, you don't have a place for a screen printing DTG guy? <laughs> no, you know, you know. People, people, uh, you know, they're like, how does that, how does that have anything to do with sublimation? I want to know. I want to know. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll one day expand those uh, horizons. But no, no, I no. also want to say that we, you know, our plan is to have a live in-person event, which of course Aaron is scheduled to speak at as well. Um, September 29th through October the 2nd in Peachtree City, Georgia. And we're super excited and that really hoping. And actually the Washington Post just uh, put out something today that said that they believe that by April that the majority of the people will be, have a built up an immunity to COVID. Hmm. Now, if you believe the news. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, 
<laughs> Fingers crossed there for sure. I know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. hey, it could but, be a 50-50, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Well, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited about getting back out there to preach through see that that place is beautiful and and yeah. uh, just and, and it was just such a great event. Had such a wonderful time the last time. Yeah. Gosh, it's been <laughs> it's almost been two years now though. <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, it I know. Yeah. I mean it's really crazy. It yeah. really is. Yeah. Like, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So sublimationsummitlive.com is where you check that out and uh, get over there and, and get registered. Uh, only 18 days left. You guys close registration or, or you leave it up and right till the, the day of? Well, I had such a problem last year with um, complaints about closing it that um, we are going to leave it open until um, probably the day before. The day but, before. Okay. Yeah, I think so. So well, on the ninth, we will probably close it. So okay. Perfect. Is- well, just do it. Just do it today. Just do it today. That's, exactly. That makes sense I easier. agree. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Cheryl, and then uh, you and I are going to go deeper tomorrow, tomorrow morning at eight a.m. Yay! Central Time. So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll give everybody the the run down on that a little bit later in the show here today, but uh, you and I will talk more sublimation, more trends. I want to get into some of these classes um, and, awesome. uh, and, and, and Wendy's confirmed coupon code is OSG. Just registered. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, Cheryl. Well, thank you thank so you much so for your much. time today and uh, you. looking forward to talking to you tomorrow morning. Yes. Take care you guys. Thank you so much. You guys Great are Cheryl. all gracious. Thank you. All right, cool. Sublimation Summit. So that's not a Wendy's coupon. That's a <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It is not. You don't get a frosty. Sign up, get a uh, frosty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, one other thing I, I didn't mention, I, I should have. Well, Cheryl, Cheryl. Um, yeah, Cheryl does such a great job of of giving back and and doing so much for the sublimation community that um, uh, you know gave us coupon code and all that kind of fun stuff. So I wanted to also give of, of myself and uh, of, of our success group. So if you'll let us know that you did, Wendy, I'm going to send it over to you. But uh, anybody else that's used our coupon code, used OSG, just let us know and, and I will send you just a quick white paper that I put together of my top 10 sublimation tips. So um, nice. feel free to, to just email me or DM me or whatever easiest way you can find me just about anywhere. Just reach out to me and, and let me know that you're going to Sublimation Summit and I will uh, send you that that top 10 sublimation tips document as well. So awesome. Um, and then Janessa did have a question and uh, I know that the answer to this question. Uh, so Cheryl uh, is, will be posting this the uh, Sublimation Summit afterwards. I think she said April 1st, and um, it will be available to watch after the fact all the way until the, uh, I think it was May 31st, if I remember right. So um, I'll, I'll confirm that with uh, Cheryl tomorrow morning on Small Business Saturday so we can find that out and then uh, let you know genesis so um all right terry well let's uh let's talk a little bit of news before we get into niche markets here um speaking of shows and, and live events and whatnot uh announcement just came across that the dax chicago land event has been moved i'm um, not canceled moved uh which is good and uh that has excuse me moved to uh, august 27th through the 28th so uh, Scott and Margie had high hopes of bringing the first show in the industry in over a year this April, um, but the government has contracted the Tinley Park Convention Center to be used as a COVID vaccination center through the end of March. Uh, the management of the convention center expects that the government will renew the contract at least through the end of April, which would force the DAX show out. So they uh, requested that uh, DAX moves and reschedules their show. So it's been rescheduled to August 27th through the 28th um, but they do have their virtual seminars coming up really soon so get get over to daxshow.com and, and get signed up for those uh, both myself terry and eric and and a bunch of other fantastic uh, speakers are going to be over there at dax as well so um, exactly that was that one kind of caught me by surprise you can't have your uh, your trade show because we're giving vaccines in yeah. in your location <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it, that, there's been a lot of reasons that shows have been moved or canceled or whatnot, <laughs> and I think that's the first time we've heard that one so far. So as far as I can tell, <laughs> I remember last year uh, the Minnesota Dax show uh, was basically because no one at the reservation where uh, the Indian reservation where they were doing the show uh, was answering the phone. <laughs> mm-hmm. So. Yeah, they they had, yeah. they had shut down and you couldn't reach them, and so it's like, well, I guess we're not having a show since nobody's there. <laughs> uh, all right, well, what other news you got, Terry? Uh, you, the Association for Creative Industries has announced the winners of its Hall of Fame Award, Special Recognition Award, Industry Achievement Award, Brick and Mortar Retail Award, and the uh, uh, Meritorious Award of Honor and Emerging Leaders Awards. Uh, for excellence in the industry, service, and philanthropy. Uh, These individuals will be recognized at Creativation Plus, featuring Art Materials World, and that's taking place March 15th through 19th. Um, A lot of awards there, but the Hall of Fame Award inductees, uh, who are pioneers in the industry, who make extraordinary contributions leading to the growth and success of their organizations and the creative arts industry, this year's inductees are John Berquist from Help Health or Help Heal Veterans, Jan Carr, former COO and Vice President of Sales for Clover Products, Cindy Groom Harry, former CEO of Craft Marketing Connection, and uh, Jerry uh, Honeman from Ben Frank- Franklin Stores, formerly HIA Chairman. You can read uh, more about these and all the awards at creativeindustries.org. All right, cool. Check that out. Uh, some, uh, some, some. You know, we want to just kind of bring bring information from all all across. You know, I think that's a little maybe just slightly outside of our our world. But you know, promotional products, uh, recognition, uh, creative industry is obviously all part of that. So um, appreciate you you sharing that, and appreciate you taking the hard one too, Terry. I would have not been able to pronounce half that stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> you did a very very good job. Um, so real quick here, Terry, uh, Kevin ha- had a comment that I wanted to just cover real quick. Once these shows get up and going again, can you use your poll to get get something in Nashville. Um, so Terry, I think he's talking to you because I have. Yeah, you know, I'm, no, I'm, I'm kidding. doing. <laughs> well, you know, I, I do classes in Nashville for Atlas Green Supply, but right now they've only scheduled in-person classes in Chicago for right now, but definitely pushing to uh, to get back into Nashville myself. Um, Nashville is kind of an expensive town for hotels. I'll just yeah. say that, you know, and, for conventions. Yeah, and not only the hotels being expensive, Terry. The the, uh, the convention center is gorgeous, but uh, unfortunately, I think uh, they're still having to pay for it because, out of all, when I used to uh, be in charge of trade shows for for uh, Coastal, um, the most expensive show that we did every year was was the shows that they had in Nashville. Um, so right, because I but I think Embroidery Mart might still. Uh, do a, a show there, the NNEP folks. Um, I think you're right. Yeah. But um, but I don't, you know, obviously they've had to not do their in-person shows as well. So um, yeah, as everything comes back online, see what happens. Because I think ISS used to do a show there in Nashville too. Uh, at least yeah, just, been a, it a, couple just times. a few years ago. Yeah. 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 So um, there definitely are shows there, but uh, yeah, it was always the most expensive, uh, like, Drayage was always crazy expensive. The hotels were crazy expensive. Um, it was definitely one of the most expensive trade shows we did every year. And, uh, you know, and that included like Atlantic City, New Jersey, which is also a pretty expensive place to do a trade show. Because you can't get there from here. That's yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, all right, Terry, let's, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Kevin says ISS bolted a couple of years ago. So, um, yeah. yeah, I can't remember when that was. Um, and and then Mar says instead of Nashville, try Murfreesboro, about thirty minutes away, or even Franklin. Murfrees- Murfreesboro, <laughs> yeah. Murfreesboro, thank you. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and then Christine says NNEP has moved shows around because of the cost of shows in Nashville. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. all right, there we go. Well, my so, my entire family is from Johnson City, Tennessee. Maybe we could do it there. <laughs> okay. You think they have a place big enough for that? Or? They have a university there, East Tennessee State University. There we go. All right. So. Let's make it happen. I don't even know. We don't even have a show, but let's <laughs> let's make it happen. Um, <laughs> all right. So, Terry, it is that time of the show, even though we're 24 minutes in. I'm sure people are getting a little jumpy right now because <laughs> they have not had their fill of dad jokes yet. So what do you got for us this week? Sir? Well, 
you know, it, we just had an unmanned landing on Mars, so I think a space joke is in order, don't you? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. So why do astronauts only use Mac computers? I don't know, Terry. Why do ma- astronauts only use Mac computers? Because everyone knows you can't open windows in space. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that was a good one. That was a good one. That was a good one. Yeah, Eric gives gives it his thumbs up as well. So, uh, all, right. all right, all right. Before we jump in, Aaron, we want to thank everyone for checking out the Two Regular Guys podcast. We are always looking for new guests. If you or anyone you know would like to join us, go to calendly.com slash two. That's the number two regular guys with your show ideas. If you are listening to the podcast version. We would appreciate you sharing with your friends so they can become regulators too. Plus, we would love and appreciate you giving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, and uh, now on Amazon Podcasts. This is really important to us, you guys, so get out there and give us some reviews. If you are watching us live right now, please join in with your comments and questions and your own niche markets and reach out to your industry friends so they can join us right now too. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Even if you don't listen to the podcast version, you just catch the live version, still go over to all of those uh, places, you know, Amazon Podcast, Stitcher, Apple Podcast, and put a review anyhow, right? Okay. So just, exactly. just do us a favor. That that would really help. We'd appreciate that. <laughs> um, you know, tell, tell them how much you love the dad jokes because even Christine laughed at that one. Sorry. Yeah, I'm touching <laughs> buttons. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, Terry, let's talk some niche marketing here. Um, you know, like, like I said, you, you you came up with the title for this show, and, and I think it was very well done. Um, you know, why should we pursue, pursue them now more than ever? What's what's the reasoning there? Well, you know, everything's changed, obviously, in the in the last year. And there was a time a year ago, <laughs> <laughs> way back, right? <laughs> you know, when when you could hang out your shingle and say, I am a sublimation printer, I am a screen printer, I'm a de- direct-to-garment printer, I, 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 d- I do uh, vinyl. Uh, you know, you, and you could actually attract people to your business and, and, and make a living doing it. But those days have kind of passed us by, at least for the time being, you know, just hanging out your generic shingle and saying, hey, I am a, I am a, a, a product decorator. It, it's hard to attract clients. Uh, what, what you really need to do is be able to drill down a little bit and say, okay, um, I, I am a decorator for this marketplace, and and I'm the person that you need to go to for for your car shirts or for your your. Well, let me tell. <laughs> I talked to someone yesterday, and she goes, Terry, I'm kind of embarrassed to tell you, we did a million dollars this year in in hand towels and coffee mugs. She said nine hundred thousand dollars of it were off color sayings on coffee mugs and she goes i try to sell the nice stuff but everybody wants the off color stuff but <laughs> but but that's her niche that's yeah. her niche marketplace and 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 uh, she doesn't have people walking in her door anymore uh, or not not nearly the way she used to uh, most of her sales are, are on amazon and again a million dollars in coffee mugs that's uh, that's a couple of bucks so yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but she has again drilled down to a, a niche where people are attracted to her that we print anything. And, and I always talk about that. One of my competitors, when I started screen printing was their slogan was we print anything. We print anything. You're not going to survive today as we print anything. If you are trying to attract new business, now your old customers, they're probably there, but, uh, but attracting new business, you, you got to have one or two or three specific niche markets where you're the expert. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Terry, you mentioned that your, your old customers are probably there, but here's, here's the, 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 maybe the way to flip that and think about it in this way is that your old customers, the ones that are there, the ones that are your, your, you know, through, through thick and thin with you, that's your niche, right? Those are the, well, true. <laughs> that, that, you know, so you might not think that uh, you have a niche or, you know, I, I have to be everything to everybody, but, um, you do have a niche if you've got customers and finding what the commonality, finding what the theme is, finding what yeah. attracted those customers to you is, is, is the important part. And, and it's why we, we talk so much about this niche marketing. Some of the comments were um, Eric and Todd both said uh, the riches are in the niches. 
uh, and and that's a hundred percent true. So um, there's something about the niches being crazy too. I can't remember. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> niches be crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so. You know, I, I think that, that that's why we love this concept so much. And, and that's why it's more important now more than ever is because w we do have to realize that we serve a specific segment of the market, you know, and, and um, it's the, it's the, as the saying goes, you know, you, if you try to be everything to everybody, you end up being nothing to nobody right. because you just, you can't connect with anybody. Right. So. Well, and, and, and today, Aaron, that, that customer that trips over you, that happens to be walking by your store and goes, oh yeah, you know, I, I need some t-shirts and goes in the door. Yeah. Uh, th that's, that's not happening. Even if you, your store is open, uh, if you peek out on the street, there's not a whole lot of people walking by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Gusta from Sweden says my wife is good at coloring horses and dogs and embroidery. So we stick to those customers in the first place and, and exactly. So there's the niche. Um, exactly. It, yeah. So I love it. And Dale says, if you print anything, you will find something that you are not comfortable printing. So, uh, well, true. We we had that uh, that show. Uh, two, was it two weeks ago? Which one was that? Sorry about about. Should I be printing this? Oh, should I be printing this? Yes, yes, yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a couple of weeks ago. Well, so I guess Terry, before we get into some actual concepts here in the niche, the other thing that that I wanted to talk about here real quick with this is. Um, something that came up on a show a couple of weeks back as well. Um, again, the dates all kind of run together, but when we had Pete Loveless on the show with us, right. right. You know, he talked about that concept of, of the fact that they've got a niche that they serve and, and as things got difficult, they had to, they had to pivot. Right. But you can't pivot if you're trying to be everything to everybody because you don't know what your customers new needs are because you don't know who your customers are. And, and, and Pete made a comment that I think, and I'm, you know, maybe now I'm, my eyes are open to it more. That's why I'm seeing it more. But at the same time, I'm seeing a lot more people talking about this idea of the fact that we're not necessarily in the decorating business any, anymore as much. We, we're now becoming more about the fulfillment side of the business and, and the, the logistics side of the business. And, you know, people that, had never shipped a product in their lives are now having to figure out how to ship things and, and those kinds of things. And so I think that's the other thing that makes niche market so important, Terry, is that if you can't be close, if you can't be really understanding of what your niche market is and what their needs are, um, you will not be able to pivot when things get crazy. So, uh, well, true. And, and you have to understand, you know, you can't just say, okay, today I'm going to do, uh, um, race racing, uh, you know, that quarter mile race. What is that? Uh, oh, the, the drag, uh, drag racing. Uh, today yeah, I'm yeah. going to be a drag race. I'm going to do drag racing shirts. Well, if you don't know anything about drag racing, you're no one's going to buy from you because you're going to share your cards immediately that you're just grasping at straws. So, yeah. you know, you, you have to have an intimate knowledge of that marketplace exactly exactly or or at least a, an intimate desire because uh, there's well, sure. a, there, there are times where your niche will come out of something that maybe you you know maybe it's a, a customer or something like that but you have have that connection you have that mechanism that allows you to gain the infinite intimate knowledge and and you sure. got to put in the work to do it so it, it, yeah i agree with that 100 percent um uh, arnett says i'm still lost when it comes to finding my niche um I know it's seminars she could go to at the DAC show. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, it is it is a seminar about finding your niche. Yes, that I will be doing <laughs> April seventh. Um, it's also a big part. You know, it, it's unfortunately it's not one of those things that you can just go. Okay, Terry, I got five minutes here. I'm going to figure out what my niche is. Right? It's, it's, it's <laughs> right. just this is this is kind of like this is business planning. This is you've got to understand your strengths and weaknesses, you do a SWOT analysis, you got to have a why, um, you know, you got to have a mission statement and, and some of these things. And so um, finding your niche is definitely a process and, and you do need to basically just keep asking yourself a lot of questions until you can find a pattern. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and, and one of those questions is, is pretty simple. You know, what am I passionate about? What, what am I, what are my interests? Because there, there's a type of decoration that goes with any and every interest you have out there. So, 
yeah. that's uh, maybe that's a that's a good uh, starting point to sit and ponder over lunch today. Yeah, yeah, I like that. And and Terry, I'll I'll can continue to admit it, even though we've agreed that uh, once we uh, borrow something from somebody, we only have to give them credit once and then it becomes mine. <laughs> but I, I continue to give you credit for this one. And I love your your idea, your concept of sitting down with whatever, uh, you know, your yellow legal pad and, uh, yep, and and just forcing yourself to write down 20 things, right? And, yep. and, and no thinking about, not not, you know, you're not sitting there like, for, forever. You're just writing anything that comes to mind, 20 things at a, at a time. And in there, you're going to find some, you're going to find some, uh, gems. Gem. Thank you. That's <laughs> what I was looking for. Some, yes. Thank you, Terry. Some gems and you know, yeah, you're going to have some crap in there too, but you, you find the gems and you take the gems out of there and then you can kind of ex extrapolate from there. So, um, so some, some will be diamond, some will be synthetic. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, um, we, we could, we could talk about this for a super long time, I, I believe. So, uh, maybe we'll keep moving on, but let me, let's get a couple of, of comments from the regulators here. Uh, Ramona says, I've been telling my clients to find one and two niches to focus on. I tell them to find something they enjoy and they will find others that enjoy the same thing. I have one client that supports her embroidery business on Boston Terriers. Yeah. So what is it you're passionate about? Um, and then uh, Eric says, I drew a line in, in the stand about two years ago and said our niche is construction companies, caps, hoodies, cars, and safety gear. We became the construction experts in the Northwest. Perfect. That, that's yeah. that's an excellent and a perfect example of a niche market. That it, yeah, but completely. It, and the other thing I love about this coming from Eric too is that I think a lot of times, and I know I've been guilty of this for sure, is you go, okay, I don't, I, I, I need to make sure that I get all the business I can get. So I don't want to, you know, be too focused because then what happens is somebody from outside of the, you know, in Eric's case, the construction world wants to do business, but you have to change that mindset. You have to realize that it has nothing to do with that. So if somebody and Eric can uh, tell us if this is true or not, and I, and I believe that it is true, I'd be shocked if it's not. But if somebody outside the construction world came to Eric and said, Hey, I need to get this done. He's not going to say no. Right. But well, look at look at Brett Bowden, our, our buddy at Printed Threads yeah. down in Fort Worth, Texas, who's probably not got electricity right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I did hear him hear him crying a little bit on uh, on Facebook the last few days. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> uh, but he he's the rock and roll shirt guy, and yeah. and the guys the 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 men and women that work for him they're from the rock and roll industry, and 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 the the uh, Dallas Mavericks came searching for them because they wanted their shirts to look like rock shirts yep. so he didn't say oh sorry you don't have a band so <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> um yeah so uh that's a perfect example terry for sure is, is is in that and you know so what stops us from really kind of going all in on our niche passionately um is that we were worried about the fact that we're going to lose business but it's actually yeah. the opposite if you are trying to be everything to everybody, you're gonna you're going to lose business. If you're focused on a niche, you're gonna get more business because then it it expands from there, and you have less to do. All you're doing is focusing on your niche. You're not worried about okay, let me try to figure out how to talk to this people, these people, these people. You're focused on your niche, and then it comes in. and And Eric says, "Correct. I do not say no to other orders, but I look at them case by case." And, and but they can, but in Eric's case, uh, I mean, who who do construction folks know? Other construction folks. Hey, yeah. where'd you get those shirts? Where'd you get those hats? Yep. Where'd you get those hoodies? <laughs> yep, yep. And and Dean says we do well with equestrian. So, um, very nice. Yeah, and and Dean also mentioned that, that they went from zero to seven hundred packages last year in, in shipping. <laughs> so what a what a learning curve. And, and 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 it is a learning curve. And and unfortunately, even if you are experienced in shipping. Uh, there's still challenges in learning curves, you know, I mean, even the sure. shipping companies themselves are, are, you know, experiencing challenges that they could have never, never imagined that they would be facing. Right. So, um, it, I, it, I sent an overnight sample package to a customer in Oklahoma city, uh, a week ago, Thursday, and he got it. 
Overnight, seven overnights. Uh, he got it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so you you selected the service that didn't specific which overnight. It was just going to be some <laughs> right. combination of overnights. <laughs> exactly. uh, no, I, it, it's a, it's a challenge for everybody, and and so again, but understanding what what's important to your niche is going to be the way that you learn. You know that you overcome that learning curve. So. Um, it's it's just one of those things that you got to do. So, all right, Terry, um, great stuff. Uh, Nan said finding my niche has taken uh, taken me a, a while, as you know, um, and and that I helped her find it. It just it, real quick though to to kind of wrap up this part, Terry, uh, about Nan's comment there, and it it just boils down to again just asking a lot of questions, understanding what it is that you know lights you up, right? Because we can't connect with groups of people that that we're not lit up about that we're not excited about that we don't have this opportunity to kind of go okay i want to talk talk to you and you want to talk to me because we have common ground and we get excited about it right you could sit and talk you know for me if if i run across somebody who's uh passionate about volleyball we could sit and talk for hours about stuff that you know other people maybe terry you would sit there and go yeah, because I think you've actually, unfortunately, had to be part of some of that stuff where I'm having a volleyball conversation. And you're sitting there going, Aaron, come on, let's seriously, we, we let's <laughs> but, usually in those conversations, I'm kind of doing this. <laughs> exactly, I'm, exactly. I'm the smallest guy in the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it has nothing to do with the fact that Terry and I don't get along or that he doesn't like me. We're just we're not connecting right then because I'm, I'm lit up about something else. And and that's the same thing that goes for niche marketing and and kind of experiencing a niche and, and focusing on a niche is that you get lit up about that. So you can have those conversations. People come to you and they, they enjoy that. So, um, uh, all right. So Terry, let's talk about some concepts. You've, you've got some great ones here. I, I added a couple as well, but, uh, we've got yeah. a, still a little bit of time. So, so get into some specific concepts for niche here for, for folks to, to borrow or, or use for inspiration. Well, I'm borrowing this one, and I, I will credit Jay Bussell, and because I thought this was a really great idea. It was the first for, time he told you, right? So after this, it's yours. Yeah, after this, okay. it's mine. Okay. All right. And Good. well, maybe maybe later we're going to be on Jay's. Uh, you and I are going to be on Jay's show, so I guess I'll give him an extra. You give him <laughs> give him credit twice, and then it's over. Okay, yeah. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Jay's idea is. Uh, so you, here's here's a business over here. I'm a decorator over here. There's a, there's a business that has customers that maybe they're not doing business with right now, or you know uh, you, you just want to keep in touch with them. You know, keep that connection for when when that business is is open and up and running again. And, and it's basically it's a care package. And depending on what kind of decorator, uh, these are the packages that you might offer. But maybe it's a shirt, maybe it's a coffee mug, maybe it's a couple of masks, all in the same package with a personalized note from company XYZ over here saying, hey, just thinking of, about you, uh, looking forward to doing business again in 2021. And 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 you as the decorator, you're also doing fulfillment. You just get the list of, of their customers and, and you put that package together and you send it out and the, and the customer over there, uh, XYZ company takes the credit for it. But, but it's, it's, um, it's just one of those kind of uh, reminder things. Hey, we're st still here for you when you're ready. And, uh, and, and I think that end customer, uh, whether it's an individual, or whether it's a business, I think they appreciate the the fact that company XYZ over here is thinking about them. You in the middle are, are are putting this package together, doing fulfillment for it and sending it out to the customer. So I think there's a lot of potential to reach out to businesses with this concept. And 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 you don't have to do anything but send us a list. We'll take care of the rest of it for you. And yeah. of course, people will pay a premium for that. People pay a premium for fulfillment type services. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's time and energy involved in that on their side. And if they can offload that, then, then there's value there. Right. So they'll pay a exactly. premium for that. Yeah. So the other thing I, I, I love about that, Terry is, is the fact that, um, it, it, I guess the, the thing that I always think about as we've gone through this whole year of, of COVID and, and, you know, zoom calls and, and, you know, the, uh, you know, having beers over Zoom and all, and all this stuff, right? So we all 
kind of lament the fact that we've lost some of that connection. We've we've lost right. some of that human connection that that you get by doing face to face type stuff. And um and and I, I believe that's true. But what I love is that our industry actually is the perfect gateway for that. Right. So yeah, we can exactly. we can create products. Something I can have. You know. So if if you know Terry was trying to. To, you know, t maybe Terry was our success group, right? And he sent me this mug, and and we're, we're going to have a conversation about it. And and I've got this thing that I can hold in my hand that is, you know, it's it's not obviously as good as being able to shake <laughs> Terry's hand or or give him a hug or whatever, but it's it's something tangible that I can actually touch and feel that I, that right. I don't get over over a Zoom call or on a video or or something like that. So. Um, we have that ability as decorators, you know, a shirt, a mug, a mask, you know, it, it's that, it's that reminder. It's that connection with, with that person. And, and I, you know, I think that's why people like to have, you know, I mean, I, I love wearing stuff that's got my logo on it and that type of thing. And, and so same well, thing and, can be said for, and, and you know, Aaron, everybody loves to get a package, especially a surprise package in the mail and, and they remember it. It, it's just like, I, and I've told this story, I don't know, I probably haven't told it recently, but back when VCRs first came out. <laughs> <laughs> Was that when you first told the story? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you know, I've gotten lots of bonuses from, from companies I've worked for over yeah. the years, and yeah. I can barely remember who or when or how much, but I will always remember walking into my office when I worked for a company called Crown Favor Company, uh, and, and there was a brand new VCR sitting on my desk. And with a note that says, I just wanted you to know how much we appreciate what you do for us from the president of the company. I never, ever forgot that gift. It just was so meaningful because it was just out of the blue as a surprise. I think it's the same thing here. I think somebody gets a, this package in the mail. They are always going to remember that you did this for them. So, yeah. and, and so we as decorators can facilitate that, that whole interaction. Yeah, I love that. Perfect. All right, Terry, before we get to the next one here, um, Becky has one uh, that I, I think it might Is be. Is it a joke about VCRs? Because we're not accepting any of those. No, no. The, <laughs> you can send your VCR jokes to uh, terrycombs.com. No, um, okay. <laughs> uh, so what Becky says is what lights me up and I love to talk about is not the same as my employees. So how do I market myself to small businesses marketing when my order takers would rather talk about band? Um, so Terry, I've got a couple of thoughts, but do you have any thoughts on that one? Well, I, I agree 100% that your employees do not have the same uh, approach as you do. And, and, and I'll, I'll take a step back too, and I'll let you get a little deeper. But, uh, when I surveyed all the employees about what benefits the company has to offer and high up on the list was if I do a really good job, sometimes I get movie tickets for me and my spouse. So we, the rest of us have a different approach on that, but uh, I'll let, I'll let you be more specific to that question. No, I, I mean, I think you're heading in, in the exact right way. Uh, Eric actually says employees never remember cash bonuses said I gave an employee a six pack of IPA for doing a good job. And he still talks about that today. And, and I think uh, a, a big part of being a business owner is, understanding, you know, especially when we have employees is understanding what lights them up and then making sure that there's that correlation. You know, when we had Matt Granados on talking about motivating the unmotivated, it, it was basically that it, it's, you know, truly understanding what, what is important to them, what they're working on, what they're uh, passionate about, and then figuring out how you, how you can correlate that right to, to what lights them up and then how, how does those two things you know their job of being an order taker versus what is important to them how do those two things match up and and then i guess the other thing that i would say in this terry and i'd love to get your feedback on this too is you mentioned brett bowden and i think he's a great example of this too is that there are times where if if this what lights you up doesn't light up your employees then they may be a a fine employee, but they might not be the right fit for your company. Um, you know, you you said uh, specifically that that Brett's a band guy, and all the people that work there are band people, right? So, right. Um, you know, I, I think that's the other thing, and and that's the harder thing because if you've got a good employee, but yet they're not they're not at that level of of you know 
understanding the niche and wanting to be a part of that niche and wanting to be passionate about it, then um, it, it might be a little more challenging. Well, I think I think a big part of that too is communicating with your employees. There's a there's a lot of assumption that uh, that everybody in our company understands our goals and understands where we're trying to get and why we do this and why we do that. And I, you know, when I've had employees, I've rarely ever said, "Okay, we're shifting gears. Here's what we're doing," without having a an in depth explanation of why. Here's why we're doing this thing. Here here's why um, we've been in the school market. Ninety eight percent of what we do. Guess what? The schools are all closed. Uh, yeah. you know, and, and this was, you know, several months ago, but this was a conversation that we had with Pete Loveless. Uh, we we got to figure something else out uh, so that I can keep each one of you employed, employed. And, and, and um, Lon Winters, you know, at, at uh, Graphic Elephants, he, he talked about uh, every single week that he would have a meeting with all of his employees saying, okay, here's where we are financially. Here's where we are about keeping your job. Here's where we are about uh, business we're trying to, to get to replace business that we've lost. So I think a lot of it is, you know, uh, there are, uh, unfortunately, I'm, I'm afraid the majority of business owners kind of get into a tunnel and, and don't think it's important for the, employ the employees to understand their business. Uh, the employee's supposed to come punch the clock and print a shirt. Why, why do they need to know where we're going? Because if they, if they know where you're going, if they know why you're going there, they're going to buy in and, and, and they're going to be a much better employee. So. Yeah, I love that. That's that's exactly where I was hoping you would go with it. And uh, <laughs> you, you and I may have uh, shared a few stories in the over the years. I was going to say we we might have had this conversation a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. All right, Terry. Well, let, we we're one niche concept in. And uh, <laughs> hey, can, can can I jump and do one more? Because this yeah. impressed the heck out of me. This yep. is something that yep. my 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 son Mike down in uh, down in Texas. Uh, he works for a company. Uh, he's a sales manager for a company and they have employees all over the country. So uh, this isn't necessarily a COVID situation, but this is a common situation. Yeah. I mean, look at me. I work for Equipment Zone. Equipment Zone is in uh, Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. And I live in Arizona because, you know, snow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> We discussed that at the top of the show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but. Uh, so my son, uh, the, his company had a had a meeting of of I think it was managers and supervisors, something like that, and and they used to get together for this meeting. You know, they don't fly in for this meeting. So he gets uh, this box, and inside is box number one, box number two, box number three. The first day of their three day online meeting, okay, open box number one. And it's got some literature in there. It's got some bling from the company. It's got snacks to have uh, at, at break time. And then the next day, box number two, box number three. And and the kicker for me was they were going to have uh, they were going to have drinks and cigars uh, at the at the end of day number three. So on day number three, knock 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 on the door. It's a courier service with a box of cigars and hands it to them for for the event that night. And I just thought, what a cool concept that is translatable to what we do, you know, for sales meetings or things like that, mm -hmm. where you're not able to do those events. Company holiday party, you know, you could, where you could send out uh, party supplies, you know, maybe mixer or, yeah. or whatever. Uh, I just thought, what a really cool thing. And, and I could tell that and my son had only been at that company for at that time uh, uh, just a few months and i just remember him being super impressed with the thought that went into that well we as decorators can can take care of that that thinking it over all they have to do is provide us with with you know whatever literature or whatever you yeah. wanted to put in there that isn't related to decorated garments but yeah. i uh, i just love that idea Oh, I think it's a fantastic idea. And, and, and like you said, we can facilitate that. And, and then that becomes a value added service. You know, the, the, the stuff, the things that you're decorating is, you know, kind of the vehicle to get you there, but it, yeah. it, it's the other part of it, right? It is that, that fulfillment. It is that planning. It is that, um, you know, kind of helping them navigate all that, let them stay focused on what their business is. And, and this is a niche that you could do it. Maybe you're, you know, so this, think about this. If you're somebody that's a, a, a decorator, 
but you're also, you know, typically the one that's, you know, planning the family holiday parties or, you know, the kind of the, the coordinator of, of all the events around you. Huh. Interesting. This could be a niche market that really does you well. And, and again, it could, it could be anything. And then, then that takes you where you need to go with your, your decorating business, but you have this service that, that is the thing that you're, you're marketing. So exactly. I, I love that. I love that. Um, and then Eric says, your show is a niche focused on the decorating apparel business. Absolutely. Ah, look at that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're, we're not, uh, you know, we're not gonna... I, I don't, I don't know how successful we'll be at it, but, uh, this is year number nine. <laughs> yeah. Nine years, you know, we're, but we're not out there trying to be everything to everybody. I, you know, I've had friends that they, they know that I do a podcast and, and they're like, Oh, I want to go check out your podcast. I'm like, no, you don't. You're not a doctor. <laughs> uh, you, you, you know, if you want to, sir, we'll have some laughs, sir. We're kind of fun to, to, you know, and all the regulators jumping in and, and it, all that stuff's great. But unless you're a decorator, and and that's okay yeah. with me, right? You know, and that's okay with with Terry and Eric, and that that that's what niche marketing is all about. So, yeah. um, and then Christine, fantastic comments, but uh, I don't have, we we got to get to a couple more niche. So Christine, we'll come back to you later, or <laughs> or just <laughs> if you're listening to the podcast version, make sure you get over to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash two regular guys, and then you can get in and see all these comments. Keep the comments going, reply, whatever, all that kind of fun stuff. All right, Terry. My next one, um, green renewable energy, that, that, that those kinds of areas, I think um, that's, it, it's interesting because there's certainly a lot of discussion about it, but I'm not so sure there's a whole lot of folks um, that it, it's kind of a niche that I think is wide open. I think there's some opportunities right. there. I think people kind of look at it and go, yeah, I'm interested, but then, you know, nobody's really doing a whole lot more beyond saying, yeah, that, that's, I, I agree. We should be doing that. But you know, what is it that you can do to, to promote that? You know, we, we've had a gentleman on our show a couple of times that we got to meet at, at ThreadX, Skya Nelson from Fed by Threads. And their business is basically built around that. They, they use sustainability and, and, and green and, and those types of things that they're really passionate about as, as a marketing vehicle for their company. And, and he talks about the fact that, yeah, they get a premium for that or, or, you know, that they, but they're very transparent and, and, and sky is out there talking all the time to people about the whole sustainability piece of it. Um, not as a, Hey, I'm here to talk about my shirts. I'm here to talk about sustainability and that's his passion. And then he brings that in and it just happens that they also sell shirts in that realm, you know, and things like, uh, you know, I hear talk about hemp uh, more. So now mm -hmm. today, and, and I know that this goes back and forth. I, I, when I first got into the industry back in the early two thousands, um, I remember a, a big discussion about hemp uh, quite a bit and then things change, but, and I, we're kind of back to that cycle, I think now too. Mm -hmm. So what, what are your thoughts there, Terry? Well, you know, it's interesting. I had a conversation uh, about two or three weeks ago with Mel Lay, who uh, runs All Made Apparel for, mm -hmm. uh, for Sandmar. And we talked for maybe 15 minutes, uh, about one minute was spent talking about these shirts feel great on and they print beautifully. Uh, the other 14 minutes, we talked about sustainability and and how excited she was about about you know how much uh, less water they use to make their products and how they recycle water bottles to put into their products and 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 the kind of cotton they use to make their hundred their new 100 percent cotton uh, garments. And some people may not know that there has it's just been a soft introduction at Sanmar, but but um, it, it, it's every business today needs to tell a story. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you're printing out of your garage or you're all made apparel who has an awesome story, but today's business world, it's, you don't hang out your shingle and say, um, uh, 144 white t-shirts screen printed for $4.99. Um, people want to buy from a company that has a story to tell. And, and you're right, Aaron, sustainability is the, uh, is the the buzz phrase of the last year or so and 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 beyond but yeah. it's not going away and and people want to buy that product and guess what they'll pay a little more for that product if it has a a a positive story for the environment a positive story for the people making those products so 
Um, it, you know, it, it, and you know, it, it's kind of like what you were talking about your passion, you know, you just have to say to Mel, well, talk to me about sustainability and Mitch, you'll just go and go and go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. so speaking of that, Terry, I'm going to put it out there to the, uh, to the public here. Um, I, I'm, I'm calling on you. Let, let's get her on the show then. Let's, let's talk about that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mel's, uh, Mel's, you know, she was on the show, but it was like four years ago. I don't know if we've had her on since then, but well, she was just on, I think briefly with us, uh, when, when she was still with Sandy Lake clothing, uh, and just a quick conversation at thread X. I don't think we ever right, had right. her so on was, a full show. Oh, so maybe it's three years ago. Yeah. First, yeah. The, yeah. The first thread X ever, whenever. Right. 2018, something like that. I don't know. Whenever decorators and cars with cookies happen. So <laughs> and I always, yeah, that's right. But I always make her tell the story about how she started out. And it, it, it it's so relatable to people in our industry because we all kind of fell into this. Uh, she just wanted to stay home and take care of her kids, yep. uh, her preschool kids. And so she set up a screen printing business in her garage and just pounded on social media about go on this journey with me. Yeah. And, uh, and she's now running uh, All Made Apparel. Yeah, for sure. It's a great story. Um, all right, Terry. So uh, you you got time for a little bonus time here? I, I do. Okay. All right. Well, do you? Then if you <laughs> I, I've, got, uh, I've got 30 minutes, 29 minutes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, so we'll uh, see what we can do here. But before we get into the next one, then, if you're going to allow me some extra time here, Eric says, I love All Made t-shirts. However, how do I explain the all made story to a construction worker? People don't get it. And then uh, Eric followed that up with, I'd love to have Mel on the show so she can help us sell all made. Um, and, and in a sense there, Terry, I think Eric maybe answered his own question. Um, I think kind of reaching out to people like Mel, uh, people involved with all made that have that passion is, is a great place to start and say, okay, Mel, I love your stuff. I love what's going on here. My customers don't get it. How, how can you help me explain that story? You know, what, what's it going to mean for them, right? And But well, then you have to be specific about who your customer is exactly. You know, so you can't just go, hey, help me sell this stuff. You got to go back to them and say, okay, here's what I'm doing. Here's what I've tried. Here's what's worked. Here's what hasn't worked. What else can I do? How can we partner up? How can we collaborate? So um, go ahead, Terry. Well, I was just going to say, and it's maybe not the the perfect pro product for every scenario, but uh, there is something to be said for uh, construction and, and, um, and, and letting them share with their customers what they're doing for the environment, right down to the t-shirts, our, our crew wears, you know, that are sustainably, uh, sustainably uh, made and that sort of thing. Um, but it's really a matter of how you approach your market, but it, you know, it's going to be more important to, to, customer A than it is to customer B. So you yep. just kind of have to have to decide if if that's part of the story you want to tell. Yeah. Cause the other part of it is is you know that's that's all made story, right? Um right. How, how do you identify with all made story? How how much are you living that and, and and breathing that and how much is that part of your story too? So um you know it it definitely uh there's a lot of moving parts, but I think uh you know well, and, I, and I, I think my story as a as a selling to construction is more in the fact that I, I know you go through a lot of uh, a lot of employees and a lot of contractors and and but I can provide uh, that 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 package for each of your workers. Just send me their size and uh, and I'll get the package over to them and you know that that sort of thing. So maybe I'm not telling the same sustainability story. I'm telling the I'm going to make this really really easy for you so that you don't have to go in the back office when you hire someone to look for three medium t-shirts and a hoodie and realize that the medium t-shirt box is empty. So you have to call a screen printer to order another 144 shirts so you can yeah. go get a better price. Uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna sell sell you the this is I'm gonna make this easy for you to do. Uh, I'm I'm the warehouse. I'm 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 gonna take care of that. You never have to go back and dig through a, a box in the warehouse again. So yeah. it's it's just a matter of finding the story that you want to tell that matches your niche market. All right. Sounds good. That's perfect, Terry. Uh, Eric says, uh, can you send us her contact info? I didn't realize she worked for Sandmore. She works for Allmade, um, but I think she's involved in the relationship that they have with Sandmore now, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, it's it's allmadeapparel.com. You can uh, find 
find her. Yeah, yeah, and and she's she's kind of become the the face of of the brand for sure. So um, right, I, I'm sure she'll be easy to find. But uh, Eric, will uh, we'll reach out here. So, um, all right, Terry, what's what's next here? What do you, what do you got next for us? Oh, I just uh, let me let me skip down uh, okay. to okay. to hyper focus niche, and and what I mean by that is is not only who you're selling to, but what you're selling, and and the reason I, I bring this up is I uh, I talked to uh, three different companies, and one of them's right here in Phoenix. All they do is decorate pillows. Uh, some of them are just p- uh, bed pillows, you know, mm-hmm. the, 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 uh, some of them are, are stuffed pillows, but they're all either for the most part, either sublimating or doing direct to garment on them, mm-hmm. but that's their niche. And, and you go to their websites and all you see there are pillows and what they're selling though is, is uh, for weddings, for, you know, for, for kids with, you know, cartoon figures on them Mm -hmm. and, and, but it's just hyper focus. But from a production standpoint, if all I'm doing is pillows, man, I am banging pillows out the door. Uh, It's just, uh, so I I know Aaron, you had a couple of, uh, of uh, examples of this as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I I love your point about the from the production standpoint, that that's a really good point. I mean, you'll see all over the Facebook groups out there. I'm having trouble with this. I'm having trouble with that. And it's like, okay, yep. You're, you're okay. Now you're doing this here and then, okay, you're having trouble with this here. And it's like, what, what is it that you do like all the time? Right. And, and let's yeah. get that process down to like a T and just make sure that, that boy, like, pillows is a great example. We're doing pillows. We know everything there is to know about doing pillows, you know, how, how to ship them and all that. So, you know, cause the problem with pillows, just as a, as a quick <laughs> note here, the problem with pillows is inserts or not inserts. Cause if you're sending them with inserts, you're shipping air. And yeah. when you're shipping air <laughs> that, you know, shipping costs are based on dimensional weight nowadays, not, not actual weight. So anyhow, that's a whole different ball game, different story there. But, but that, that, hyper focus of that will also really change your business from a profitability standpoint because you can get super good at it. You know, I, for example, right. you know, we do a little bit of sublimation stuff here. My wife does. And, and, um, we did a ton of, ton of mass, did a ton of sublimation mass uh, over the course of, of 2020. And, uh, I mean, I, I push print and I hand them to her. And next thing I know, it's like, Holy crap, you, you're done with those already. Yeah, and she's got it down, right? It just it, it's yeah. like a, you become so good at it that it, it just becomes second nature. So I think that's a really important point to make here about being hyper focused in your niche. A couple of other niche areas that uh, I've seen. Um, I, I know people that are exclusively doing socks. So uh, you know that that's a potential niche market. Uh, and 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 I it's been interesting to see some of them even you would think that if I'm only doing socks, that's a pretty narrow niche, but they've niched down even further than only doing socks. They're only putting pet pictures on socks. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, <laughs> Holy crap. That's, re- but they, they just kill it at it because that's all they're doing. That's the, their, their message. And it's like, they're, they're going from there. Then once they get really good at socks, you know, you can see them expanding. Maybe we'll do some, some other, you know, some shirts or some different things like that, but focusing in on that. And then another uh, niche that I think, I don't know if it's necessarily underserved, but I think that the market is so massive that there's opportunities there uh, because uh, the maternity, the newborn stuff, because here's mm-hmm. the deal. There's no season on that. Kids are being born all the time, <laughs> all day, every day. There's there's no seasonality to that. So, you, you know, you're not worried about that. You, there's always a new customer available. And so things like swaddles and crib sheets and blankets and onesies and, you know, uh, uh, bink holders or whatever you, you call those things. I mean, I've seen all sorts of crazy and, and fun and neat and cute baby products. Um, so there, there's another hyper-focused market that you can get into. Um, yeah, you know, that was what I was thinking of as well, Aaron, uh, because uh, I, I talked to someone out in California and she sells on Etsy and and she has a direct garment printer, but she she leaves the four by four platen on her machine all the time. In fact, she has an eight up 
platen so she can print eight onesies at one time. And that's her entire marketplace is, is onesies. But obviously, like you said, it, there's no season to it. And as long as you can get that reach out there, uh, the business is, is there to be had. I, 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 by the way, have a new granddaughter coming probably on Monday. So, <laughs> wow. Jeez. You, you had a, you had a whole bunch of kids and now you got a whole bunch of grandkids too. I know. I know. I know. Look I have that, a, look at that grow. <laughs> <laughs> this will be number six. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, so Doug says niche market idea, military veterans check with the VA or VFW groups, web pages. I'll buy anything with my old squadron or win winging insignia on it for myself or events. Um, yeah, the military is definitely a, a great niche market idea. Yeah, I've, I've certainly talked to many decorators that that is all they do. Aaron, we used uh, when we were at US Screen, we had a customer uh, that owned coffee shops on at uh, at the Marine Base at Twenty Nine Palms, mm -hmm. and was getting into T-shirts. And specifically, they weren't going to sell to anybody, but all those squadrons and groups mm -hmm. there at the at the at the base. Yeah. Well, when my when my uh, my son in law is a is a naval officer and when he was at officer candidate school uh the one of his jobs was to go to a local screen printer and get the shirts for his group and there was somebody assigned to that every group that came through uh so you know <laughs> it's yeah. a it's 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 a big marketplace and if, if you are military or former military you, you got the inside track because you understand what they want and what they need exactly exactly because you know i think that's a great point and lead leads into what i wanted to say about that too terry is that because the other part of it is you do have to have that understanding right so if you're you're going okay i'm just going to go do military because i think it's a great market and you know nothing about it um you had mentioned because i really loved hacksaw ridge yeah yeah it's like <laughs> it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show real quick you know things aren't going to be right it's going to be um you know you won't have the right insignia you won't have the right whatever right it, so um so yeah be be careful of that you know there's some great niche marketing ideas that a lot of people have but just because it's a great idea for them doesn't mean it's going to be a great idea for you right unless unless you're willing to go immerse yourself in it and find a, a you know something that lights you up inside of that you know so you don't necessarily have to be a veteran but you have to have a passion for serving veterans to to be able right. to to get exactly. into something like that. So, exactly. um, all right, Terry, well, I've got one last one here before we get to your five things. Um, okay. and, and I think this one will be brief because it's kind of a little bit of a play on the, the company event packages that you had before, but I think you could do something similar in the education world. Um, you know, with more and more online classes, uh, for example, our, our next door neighbor, she just graduated high school last year and is, is off to, to college this year and uh, she's virtual college <laughs> virtual college and, and the college she's going to is actually within walking distance from her house it's the community college up the street here but she's not uh as far, far as i know she's not stepped foot on campus right, right. so <laughs> um but so but you think about the college experience you know i mean all of the people that are so fervent in their fandom of, you know, Kansas and K Terry's case and stuff like that. Uh, you know, how many Kansas hats do you have or, or mugs or, or different things that represents that school? And, and if you're not on campus anymore, you're missing a little bit of that connection. You're not getting that rabid fan connection because you don't have the physical things to, to dry in. I mean, I, I remember, uh, went out the other day and was walking through the farm and home supply store and uh, saw a young man that had a hat, a sweatshirt. Um, and, and even I think his jacket as well, or no, so it was his shirt. And then he had a jacket and a hat that were all decked out with one of the local colleges, Lindenwood schools. And I'm thinking, man, you know, that's not a big name school that a lot of people would hear, but he's all in. Right. And yeah. And so how do you, how do you create that? And, and it could be something like a create a new student package, similar to like what you had with the company events, you know, can, can you reach out to your local community college? Can you reach out to some of the, the folks, the, the new alternative schools and things like that to where you're, you're giving them again, that physical piece that they can make a connection with that brand. 
Well, well, you know, look at uh, when when you have a freshman student go off to college. Uh, I, I had two sons who went to Kansas, twins, so I, it was one trip. <laughs> and, and a daughter went to Arizona State. Well, what do you do when you take them to campus? You go to the bookstore. And not only does the student get their their Kansas gear or their Arizona State gear, uh-huh. but but parents do too. You've got yeah. to you got to go home with the gear, and that isn't happening. That's a really really good idea, Aaron. And yeah. and I think uh, being able to even the community college being able to uh, uh, like uh, Scottsdale Community College, I'd buy one of these shirts. They are the Scottsdale Community College Fighting Artichokes. So <laughs> yes, that, they are, and, <laughs> and that's what happens when you have a have a student. A vote on what your school mascot should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they all but, love it and they all connect to it. I forgot all about that. that exactly, that. exactly. But but to to say to that school, hey, and and you know we'll pay you this this percentage of it, but we want to be able to reach out to all of the students and all the parents, and they probably be all about it because not only do they make a little profit from it, but they've got a lot of people making connection to that school and out, out promoting that, that school. So I love that idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think about this, Terry, the main reason that most sports uh, take place at schools is not because they're money makers, you know, outside of your, your football and basketball and some of the, the, the big ones, those other sports are not money makers for the college. They are a, a, a brand ambassador kind of program for the college. So sure. think, think about, think about that, right? You help them with their brand and, and getting out there to people. So exactly. Uh, all right, Terry. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground. Really great stuff there, Terry. Thank you for, for oh, bringing it well. all together. Yep. Thanks. Um, so uh, let's see here. <laughs> I think this is Todd logged in to our success group said uh, this was so hard to buy overpriced garbage printed shirts from the school store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, all right, Terry, well, you've got a five things for us as well. So, uh, I do let's, uh, let's hit the five things and then let's see what Terry's got for us here. All right. <laughs> Here are my five things or five ways to get a great DTG print. Number one, start with good art. 300 DPI saved at full size. No 72 inch or 72 uh, DPI uh, downloads from the internet. Uh, number two, the ideal shirt. And the ideal shirt for DTG is 100% ring spun combed cotton. Number three, properly pre-treated shirts. Please do not go to the internet to learn how to pre-treat a shirt. Almost all of it's wrong. <laughs> so, so, Except for the, ter- uh, the video you did, other than that. Exactly. <laughs> uh, number four, uh, 40% plus humidity in the room with your printer at all times. This is critically important to proper running of the machine, and it's true of all direct-to-garment printers. Number five, a good quality heat press or DTG specific conveyor dryer. And Aaron and I preach about buying a good quality heat press, get a good quality heat press. So those are my five ways to uh, get a great DTG print. Yeah. So those are fantastic. I, I love uh, every single one of those, Terry. Um, uh, so good point there. The other real, real quick, if, if you don't mind me adding something, I know we said five things are just to Go, but I want to add something. <laughs> you can be Eric. You can be Eric. You can do six. Okay. I can. <laughs> well, just back to your number one. You said good art, three hundred DPI saved at full size. I just want to remind people that if you've got a seventy-two DPI piece of art and you just you blow it up to three hundred at full size, that's not the same thing as actually having. <laughs> True. The, yeah. So I just want to make sure everybody's clear on that. I, I, excellent point. You're exactly <laughs> correct. <laughs> so th- that whole thing is a, a big problem for, for folks. So um, and then real quick, also, uh, Eric says very informative show today. But then he said, I haven't been able to watch recently. But is Terry OK after the Super Bowl? I don't see many beer photos on Facebook. <laughs> I uh, I'm OK because we still have Patrick Mahomes and he's 24 years old. <laughs> so see you next year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. I don't think you, uh, the chiefs are going anywhere, unfortunately for the non chief fans out there, but uh, I was... think they might have, have a little bit of a run like new England did. So yeah. Oh, good, good. All right. Well, good. Glad, glad you're here. You're okay. Uh, Terry, what else do you have uh, coming up here? 
Well, my five things came from this on Tuesday, February 23rd. Uh, Jeff Morgenthaler and I will be doing a uh, uh, kind of a 30 minute webinar uh, on the index of the perfect DTG print. So we created this index to show you how to get to that perfect print. Uh, you can, that's going to be at three o'clock Eastern, two o'clock center of the universe time. Uh, sign up for that free webinar at equipmentzone.com. March 25th, I'll be presenting a live DAX online seminar so you can ask questions. Aaron, Eric, or Aaron, you'll be facilitating that. Yeah. Um, what do I really need to buy when starting a screen printing business? Because, you know, suppliers aren't going to necessarily tell you the wrong thing. They just might not know the best thing for you to buy. Uh, my complete screen printing business course with Workhorse Products in Phoenix. Here's the announcement. Yes. April, April 17th and 18th. I, I will warn people uh, within 24 hours of announcing it, we filled the class 25% full. So <laughs> it's going to, it's going to fill up fast. Uh, my complete screen printing uh, business course with Atlas Screen Supply in Chicago is May 22nd, 23rd. I need to get an update from them on, on signups and you can find all of my events at, uh, terrycombs.com under the tour dates tab. How about you, Aaron? Oh, that's great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that you got that announcement in, in Phoenix. Um, you know, definitely, uh, hopeful that we all get back to, uh, back together soon and <laughs> live face to face. I'm, I'm hopeful you guys are able to pull that off. I, I feel, I feel good about it, Terry. So, so. Yeah, I, I do too. It's a small group. Uh, we, we limit, we limit it to about 20 people anyway. They've got a big classroom there. So people will be spread out and, uh, you know, we'll have masks on when we're actually, you know, on the machines and things like that. So, uh, I'm, I'm pretty confident and, and, and Arizona is pretty open. So, okay, good, 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 good. And, and yeah, you guys are taking, taking the right precautions and all that kind of fun stuff. So everybody will be safe. So, and, and obviously people are, are excited about it since you got 25% of it already full. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, all right. For me, Terry, uh, in about uh, nine minutes here, uh, Eric and I will be putting on our, our, the third episode of the half uh, with Eric Campbell and myself. It's a quick 30 minute Q and a, and, uh, it, no matter where we're at in the conversation, we, we both, so, you know, we've had two shows and, uh, both of us have been cut off mid sentence, uh, at that 30 minute mark. It's hilarious. And it's a lot of fun. Um, but it, it's just, it's, it's fun. It's a quick, uh, 30 minute Q and a. And, uh, uh, so we go from there that's happening, uh, in, Oh, now, now eight minutes, right? <laughs> so, uh, got to wrap up here. Eric's over there going, wrap up, wrap up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why he's been doing this the whole time. All right. <laughs> um, and you then, thought he was saying, huzzah, huzzah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., I mentioned this already, but uh, Cheryl is going to be joining me over there at Small Business Saturdays. And uh, so looking forward to having her on. And you can uh, check that out at facebook.com slash our success group pro or over at live osg and you can also catch the half at both those places or you can find it on eric's channels uh but the other thing tomorrow morning terry is i'm going to be announcing a new change for small business saturday that i'm really excited about because it has to do with the success principles and uh, going to give me an opportunity to really go deeper into that and kind of give more value on on small business saturdays and and kind of focus on the our success group members so i'm really excited about that uh, announcement that i'll be making tomorrow morning as well very cool yeah. And then April 5th, uh, DAX online seminar. Uh, those are spread out over a couple of weeks. I'm really excited about it. We're getting all the details together, kind of getting all the, the shows produced and prepared. Uh, so I'm presenting on April 5th, Conquering Fear and Live to Tell About It. We'll talk about how small businesses can overcome their fears and be able to step outside their comfort zone uh, and, and basically share some techniques that you can you know, confront fear and push your way through it and, uh, you know, turn it into the art of success. We've got a whole flywheel of things that you can do to kind of make that happen. And then as Terry mentioned on April 7th, I will be talking about finding your niche for more success. Uh, as you guys have just heard, we, we really believe in how important it is to, to find a niche and, um, We'll walk through the steps and figure out how to find find your niche. So that's happening on April 7th. Go to DaxShow.com for that. And then uh, Eric is also got coming up here today at 2.30 Mountain Time. Take up episode number 53. Today it's about money making with machine embroidery, segment styles, and customer profiles. So uh, make sure you check out the take up. And uh, you can find that at EricCampbell.com. 
Uh, Eric will also be presenting at DAX, as I mentioned. He's going to be talking about moving from hobby to pro and also e-commerce for embroidery. So uh, I think both really great topics. Uh, real excited about all of our topics and all the other stuff happening over there at DAXshow.com. And uh, maybe on the half, I'll try to pin down Eric today on, on the new webinars coming soon. So what do you... There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw him Don't wait till the end because yeah. he'll just... Just start talking, knowing yeah, he's going to be yeah, cut I'm off. I'm going to have to bring that up right at the beginning. Good point, Terry. Thank you for reminding me of that. So. All right, Terry. Well, we've gone well into a bonus time. Thank you guys so much for being here, Terry. Great job. We've come to the close of another show. All right. We also want to thank our show producer, Eric Campbell, for all the things he does to make this show better each and every week. Yep. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, next week, we've got uh, Scott Ritter back with us. And uh, if the, you don't know who Scott Ritter is, he's with the DAX show. And uh, he actually sent me an email this week, Terry, and let me know that he's got a free gift for everybody who tunes into the show. So nice. you know, he, he didn't tell is me Is that what. for the hosts also? Or? I, I hope so. I hope so. He didn't tell me <laughs> what. He would not tell me what. But he's got, a, he's got something, a surprise for us. So make sure you, you don't miss that. Again, same time next week, right here, same, same location. <laughs> Always fun to have Scott on the show. Yeah. And uh, Aaron, <laughs> until then, I'm Terry Combs. He's Aaron Montgomery. And we are the two regular guys. Here we go. We're out. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash two regular guys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash two regular guys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, two regular guys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.